Hello, and welcome to the Nutrition Diva Podcast. I'm your host, Monica Reinagel, and today I've got an advanced look at a newly approved weight loss drug that's going to be coming onto the market this year. Nutrition Diva listener John recently asked me to weigh in on a new FDA-approved weight loss drug called Gelesis 100. The drug is not yet available to the public, but it'll probably be coming onto the market very soon as a prescription-only drug under the brand name Plenity. I bet it's going to be hard to miss it when it does become available because there's probably going to be a huge advertising and marketing push. But is this new drug going to be the one that turns the tide against obesity? Previous pharmaceutical approaches to weight loss have all had major drawbacks. Stimulants like fenteramine are quite effective in suppressing appetite, for example, but they can be habit-forming, not to mention that pesky side effect of occasionally stopping your heart. Other drugs, such as Orlistat, are somewhat effective in blocking the absorption of fat and calories from foods, which can be helpful. Unfortunately, they also block the absorption of some fat-soluble nutrients, not to mention a rather embarrassing side effect requiring frequent changes of underwear. This new drug takes a different approach that avoids the worst of these side effects. It's designed to reduce your food intake by making you feel like you've had more to eat than you actually have. So the drug is made from two compounds that occur naturally in foods, cellulose and citric acid. You swallow three capsules with a big glass of water before meals, and the capsules release particles in your stomach, which rapidly absorb the water and expand to form a harmless gel. This gel has no calories, but it takes up a fair amount of space in your stomach and your intestines. And with less room in your stomach, the idea is you'll eat less and then you'll lose some weight. How well does it work? Well, in a clinical trial, people who used Plenity and also followed a reduced calorie diet and exercised moderately lost more weight on average than those who reduced calories, exercised, and took a placebo. About 20% of the people in both groups dropped out before the end of the trial, which was scheduled to last about six months. Of those who completed the entire six months, the group taking Plenity lost about 6% of their weight, while the group taking a placebo lost just about 4%. So you could say that people taking the drug lost 50% more weight than people taking the placebo, and that sounds really impressive. However, the actual weight loss was pretty modest in both groups. The group taking Plenity lost an average of 14 pounds, while the placebo group lost an average of 10 pounds. So we're only talking about an extra four pounds over the course of six months. And just as a reminder, everybody was also reducing calories and exercising. Now, Even though the people who were taking Plenity didn't lose a whole lot more weight than the people who didn't, it is certainly possible that they found it a little bit easier to stick to their diets because maybe they didn't feel as hungry. Unfortunately, the researchers didn't report on things like perceived hunger or how difficult the subjects found it to stick to their diets. They did assess safety and side effects. That's a big part of getting your drug approved. And there were no big concerns about safety, but the group taking the drug definitely did report more side effects than the group who were taking the placebo. And most of these side effects were digestive symptoms like diarrhea or bloating, gas, constipation, or abdominal pain. But most of these were considered mild in severity. There are some non-pharmaceutical ways to make your stomach feel a bit fuller. Researcher Barbara Rolls has popularized an approach known as volumetrics. And the idea here is to choose foods that have a lot of volume, but not too many calories. Primarily, these are foods that contain a lot of fluid or a lot of fiber. So soups, broths, whole vegetables and fruits, whole grains, that sort of thing. Even just drinking a full glass of plain water before meals has been shown to decrease food intake. These volumetric foods trigger special cells in your stomach that register pressure or fullness, and this then sends a signal to your brain that you've had enough to eat. Presumably, this feature is designed to prevent us from eating until our stomachs literally explode. 
But because these volumetric foods and liquids don't contain a lot of calories, you end up reducing your calorie intake and losing weight. It's basically the same concept as plenity, only it involves healthy foods instead of drugs. So I can see two potential drawbacks to plenity, and I'll share those with you right after this quick break to thank our sponsors. Today's episode is supported by Hallmark. It can be hard to find the right moments to tell your loved ones how much you care. Sometimes just saying it doesn't feel like quite enough. But when you write it on a Hallmark card, that feels different. It's about taking that everyday reminder and turning it into the kind of love that someone can really hold on to. So why not send a Hallmark Valentine's Day card to all the important people in your life this year? They have so many kinds of Valentine's Day cards. You're sure to find one that's exactly right for every important relationship. Plus, this year, for every Valentine's Day card purchased, Hallmark is going to give a card to someone who could use a little love. Up to a million cards. Valentine's Day is Friday, February 14th. So keep the love going and visit hallmark.com slash diva to find a Valentine's Day card for everyone you care about. And use the code diva to get 20% off your card purchase. Our podcast this week was also supported by Sejo. Sejo creates timeless bedding and wellness essentials that elevate your home from a space into a sanctuary. Sejo's luxurious, sustainable bedding is cool to the touch, silky soft, hypoallergenic, and antimicrobial. Their bamboo lyocell fabric is unbelievably soft, and unlike a lot of other bamboo bedding on the market, this is eco-friendly. And you can sleep even easier knowing that a portion of your purchase is donated to the Joyful Heart Foundation. I'm really pleased with my Sejo duvet cover. It's cozy in the winter, it's cool in the summer, and it looks great even after multiple washes. Visit sejohome.com diva and use the code diva to get 10% off of your order. That URL and code is also going to get you either a signature candle or one of their amazing herbal tea bundles for free with your purchase. Just go to sijohome.com slash diva and use the code diva. One of the potential drawbacks of plenity is that you'd presumably have to keep taking it indefinitely in order to maintain your weight loss. And personally, I'd rather get myself used to eating a certain way that helps me maintain my weight than commit to a lifetime of pharmaceutical support. But neither plenity nor the volumetrics approach addresses the elephant in the room here. And that is, we don't always stop eating just because our stomachs feel full. I want you to think back to the last big holiday meal you enjoyed. How full did your stomach feel as you finished Thanksgiving dinner, for example? Was there really room for a piece of pie? Did that stop you? Well, maybe it did, but I think you get my point, which is we eat when we're not hungry all the time. In fact, I'll go one step further and suggest that the majority of the excess calories that are responsible for our unwanted weight are consumed when we're not really hungry. We eat because we're bored or we're sad or procrastinating or simply out of habit. We eat because it's time to eat or because the people around us are eating or maybe just because something appetizing appears. Often we will keep eating until our plate is empty. We'll eat way past the point at which our physical hunger is satisfied or our stomachs feel full. And no drug or bowl of soup is going to remove that impulse or urge or desire. Choosing foods that fill us up for fewer calories is a great strategy for weighing less, but it's rarely the whole solution. Usually, we also have to work on our habits, adjust our environment, and address emotions and other non-hunger-related issues that lead to overeating. Similarly, a drug that fills our stomachs with gel is unlikely to be a silver bullet against obesity. We'll still have to figure out all the other stuff if we want to achieve permanent weight loss. And frankly, while the benefits of this drug may have cleared the bar for statistical significance and drug approval, the actual impact on weight loss was pretty modest, especially when we can exploit that same effect through non-pharmaceutical means. So what do you think? If you occasionally, or maybe regularly, overeat, 
How much of a role does your physical hunger play in this behavior? Would a physical sensation of fullness keep you from eating more of something that you really enjoy or from just finishing whatever is on your plate or from turning to food for emotional comfort? If so, maybe Plenity would be useful, but seeing as the drug is not yet available, why not make use of this time to try the same approach, but with foods? You can check out Barbara Roll's book, Volumetrics, or simply go back to the Nutrition Diva archives and look up episode number 126, How to Eat Less Without Feeling Hungry, and episode number 223 on satiation, the foods that make you feel full. And then report back. I'd love to hear what you discover. You can email me at nutrition at quickanddirtytips.com or come join the discussion on my Facebook page. You'll find that at facebook.com slash nutrition diva. And if you're looking for more resources and support specifically for sustainable weight loss, Brock Armstrong of the Get Fit Guy podcast and I run a private Facebook group that's devoted to this topic. And you can find that on Facebook by searching for Way Less Life. You'll find a complete transcript of today's show, along with links to the research that I reviewed at quickanddirtytips.com, where you'll also find the entire archive of all 557 episodes of the Nutrition Diva podcast. Have a question or a topic that I haven't yet covered? Call the Nutrition Diva listener line to suggest it. The number is 443-961-6206. I'll be back next week with a special report on this year's best and worst diets as ranked by leading nutrition and weight loss experts. If you're not already subscribed to the show in your favorite podcast app, be sure to add us to your list so that you're sure to get all the episodes. And if you are already subscribed, I'd love it if you'd leave us a review. I'm always eager to hear what you like best about the show or even what you'd perhaps like to change about it. After all, the show is for you, so tell us what you like. Our show is produced by Nathan Sems, edited by Karen Hertzberg, and our team at Macmillan Audio also includes Morgan Ratner, Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, and our director, Kathy Doyle. Thanks so much for listening, and remember to eat something good for me. 